<laughs> Welcome to Wally Bowl on this fine, wet and windy Sunday. And I want well, have a look at this machine here. This is a miter trimmer from Axman's. It's also available from Rockler and Grizzly. It's a bit just rebranded. But I've got a bit of a problem with it. Let me show you. It's a little bit, how to put it? Blood! And it wasn't like that before. I've blunted it, and I think some of the reasons, because most of the time this machine is left to one side and hardly ever used, and I've pretty much, I think the actual fine edge of the cutting edge of the blades have become, had it dull. It's probably rust, because I do need to clean it up, because it's got a bit rusty, a little bit of surface rust on it. And I don't use it very much, but I usually use it if I'm doing trimming up the um, beads on the windows and stuff like that, so I get a nice tight finish. I get a lot tighter finish with that than what I can using a mitre box or... Even my, my Dewalt Radio Arm Saw and, and a jig. So I think we need to sharpen this tool because that's not a very big bit of wood, is it? And it's, you know, it's taking quite a bit of effort just to trim the edge. Obviously, if you use softwoods and stuff like that, it'll be a lot more effective. So, first, what we have to do is we have to remove the blade. And on these machines, you have two blades, but as you can see, there's only one on this one because I've already took it off and made a little jig. I say, you'll see there's a bit of wood with an angle cart on it. Now, it's not the same plain angles as you'd expect, like for instance, on your, um, I don't know, Stanley Bailey number seven, or any of your bench pans, you know, 30 or 28 degrees or whatever. This one starts off at 30 degrees for the main bevel, so it's that bevel, the primary bevel, but the secondary, the secondary bevel here, the actual sharpened edge, is about 32 degrees. So I don't have anything, um, that is at that sort of angles anyway. So anyway, I usually make these little jigs up anyway for everything. So let's put this to one side and let's sharpen up and see if it's any better. So what I've done is I've got this bit of wood, cut the angle on it at 32 degrees. It now sits, can sit onto this block of wood, which has this little diamond sharpener on it. It's, a, it's just a thousand grit diamond sharpener. You can go finer if you want, obviously. It's up to you, isn't it? Start course and work your way down. Um, but there's a few things we have to remember about these, these tools. There's one thing is, you don't lap the back. Not like you would do your hand planes or anything like that. You don't lap the back. You, you, you get rid of the wire edge, which you could do a strop if you want. Oh, I don't recommend doing it in the palm of your hand like I do in my hand planes, because it's a bit wider. But, um, or just a few, say three, three or four on the back edge. On the back, just to lap the back enough just to get rid of the, the wire edge. Because what you'll do is, otherwise, you'll reduce the, um, you'll change the angle of the cut, the actual blade within the machine itself, within this, this thing here. But also, it'll, it'll alter its um, position in the actual um, cutter. So, in, in this case, you always sharpen the actual beveled edge. So, all I'm going to do is, I'm going to whack a bit of lubricant on here. So it's really simple. Oh yeah, but before, how did I get the angle on my bit of wood? And how did I get the right angle on this actual, um, you know, to find out the angle on this? All I did was, I used um, my angle finder, which you've probably seen in previous videos. Perfect drop it. I plug that on here, or that, or so, that way around actually. Make sure it's at the right angle. And I turn it on. At the moment, it's not it's not, not saying it's level. And then what I do is, and I click it again, and it sets it. Zero is up to um, zero. I saw you couldn't see it at the angle, but I, I have to put that way around for it to work. But yeah, so now, now in that direction, it is now saying zero. So all I um, did from that, I'll tell you what, let's turn this around. Let's put it somewhere else, just so you can see properly. It might make more sense, might it? Right, let's do it again. Let's turn it off. Let's turn it on. Zero it, and now whatever angle I put that at will change the angle on the display. So I knew that my primary angle, the main grind, should be about 30 degrees. That's not on there, there you are, about 30 degrees. But then the part, just about, then the primary, uh, sharp then the secondary angle needed to be at about 32 degrees, it's just over at the moment, but that's, that's near, near as damn it. As long as I do maintain that, but you know, oh, it's 32.6 type of pressure on it. Yeah, it's going to vary. 
within half a degree that are there. We, we, we can actually alter that by um, moving the blade up and down the guide. But I'm not worried about that. That, that to me is probably near, near enough to what I want. So all I do is I put this block in here. It's nothing special. And I'm just going to put that on there, which is a thousand grit diamond sharpener, and the rest of it is pretty darn obvious. So we just, I'm going to put a bit of lubricant on there. In this case, it's just engine oil and a bit of white spirit, because that's all I use. I don't, I don't use water. I know a lot of people do, a lot of people use Windex and what have you, but I, I don't like the idea of adding water to my metal tools that are just going to start rusting. And by the way, these, these actual um, blades that come in this mitre trimmer for either the um, Axminster Rockler or the Grizzly, they're pretty much the same pattern, are high speed steel blades. The plastic machine is 150mm uh, maximum by 90mm, but you're never going to be trimming anything that big. It'd be absolutely ridiculous with this, this piece of kit. You would have to have arms shot and, and a Tommy bar on the end. And quite frankly, you break it. So there's no point. It's, it's for doing smaller work, like pitch frames and um, stuff like that. And you already cut your mitres and it's just there for actually trimming them. So you cut close to your mitre, but not fully close. And then you finish it off with this tool and it gives you a really fine, really, oh, super, 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 super fine finish. Which means you get your joints up tighter. So you virtually can't see them. It's amazing. So, like this, I'm just going to put the way around, as you can see. I'm using this bit of wood, which is obviously a bit longer to give me a bit more stability, and I'll just let you do that. How easy. I'll do that enough times. I'll check it occasionally. I'll flip it around so I'm not always sharpening the same old bit again on the wear it the same bit of the plane on the diamond sharpener. Now these diamond sharpeners are actually cheaty ones. I got them from China. Sorry. I think they're about five euros each. It took about two months to get it, but you know <laughs> they're extremely cheap. But you can get you, you can get and they're quite good actually, but you can still get them if you're paid a little bit more off on Amazon Prime. But they're actually quite um how to put it yeah, they're quite decent actually, I'm quite impressed with them. They cut quite fast. And already I can really tell a massive difference. I haven't honed the back yet. And I've got rid of the burr. In fact, I think there even is a burr, might be because of high-speed steel, but so either I haven't actually sharpened the actual edge fully yet, which is a possibility. Do, 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 do. No, it's actually it's doing it. Just got a bit more. So the hope is it's going to make a lot, you know, make that job a lot easier. A lot less force required when doing trim. You have to put a fair bit of welding on anyway, but you know that was a bit excessive. So I know I'm sharpening it. Well, I know I'm removing the metal because. The oil that's coming off has a black stain to it. And that's little fragments of steel. Well, full strokes, but make sure that when you are doing this, it's actually um, making contact at both ends of the actual blade or knife. You get a nice even edge. Nice even bit. Oh, that's those really better. I'm going to put a couple of. Um, Lap the bag a couple of times just to make sure there's no burr on it. Clean any mess off it as well. And back on that edge there. Might just fold the burr back and forth. And literally the wire edge or burr will actually just break off. Is it? Right, now that is pretty good. I think that is pretty good. A bit of paper here, so it's like. Ooh. Is that enough? Ooh. And it's quite a wide blade. Yeah, that's pretty sharp. I think that possibly is enough. That is very, very sharp. It does create a bit of a burr. Not much. No, don't... Well, 
don't be a fool and, well, I'm not trying to call you a fool, but don't try and do it freehand because you can end up grinding a huge amount of material away or having to send it away to a saw doctor, you know, a sharpener to actually sort it out. So that's pretty much it now, I'm quite happy at that. So I can now remove these screws. These are uh, number 10s, three quarter number 10s. Yeah, I think that's okay. Yeah, that's sharp enough, I think, for that. That's pretty good. So now I'm going to reinsert it into the machine. And let's just get a quick test. I'm going to try and put it in there without damaging it. Let's just have some the way there. Then that has to go in there without knocking the edge. Bring it right over. Tell you what, should we put it the right way around? That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's gonna be a bit tricky. It's a bit tricky not to touch the edge onto the actual body of the it's not a good idea to be wearing gloves really, it should be wearing gloves. And the three machine screws. Now I've actually started to smack this thing because I'm giving it a machine because I'm starting to give it a bit of a clean up because it's been sitting about a long while. But I thought I'd just um, show you how to sharpen a knife for the Scarabur Mitre Trimmer. They, they need to be reasonably tight screws, but don't overdo it. And it's also a good idea, I'm taking it off again anyway, but it's also a good idea to put a little bit of oil onto each screw. So next time you want to remove the knife, you're not going to have too much force. So let's give it a see what it's like now. Hopefully, hopefully, touch wood after me going on about it so much. That it's good to, oh, come out, put it back in. <laughs> away, and let's see what happens. Uh, there's no point using the same knife as last time because that was blunt. We're going to be using this knife instead. The one we just sharpened. Oh my god. Let's bring you in a bit closer, shall we? Tell you what. I'll take you off there and I'll show you. Don't know if I try not to touch anything. I'm uh, trying to do it without editing the video. And that's why I make those mistakes. So there you go. Let's try it now. That's it. Now you can just see that's just peeling off nicely. I'll take them off much bigger sections of wood. You could almost just cut the whole mite I like it. In fact, we'll give it a go. Not on one here, obviously. It has to be able to peel. You can't cut. You can see how much it took off that time. You can't obviously do that. That's not really how this thing's supposed to work. So you wouldn't necessarily put that in there and try and cut the whole mite on here. You would already have these mitres cut and then you'd use the machine to trim the mitre. But I'm just going to show you from there. Oh. I took the stops out because I'm dismounting the machine at the moment, that's why it moved. You have these things here which uh, sit on the back here and you can adjust them and they're your stops for the actual fence but I've actually removed them at the minute just, for, just so I can do a bit of a repair. Not repair, I mean uh, just to clean up really. Yeah, that's loads better. I'm quite happy with that. Now, comparing what I was doing earlier, you know, if you look at that, the finish on that is pretty darn good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Anyway, that's how you sharpen your blade on your Axminster ah, trimmer. Like I say, it could be a rock, it could be a grizzly, but they are pretty much the same machine, they're just a different colour. All probably come from China. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Let's say. Anything on there? No, I don't actually say. Probably says somewhere on it, but I can't see it. But it's a good little machine. Um, like I say, I ain't got the stops in it at the moment. That's why these are not very secure. Normally have a um, stop in there, which you can lock it in position for that. And also you've got adjustment on the back here. Yeah, it's quite a good little thing already. And it has a, like a uh, rack and pinion style adjustment. But don't put your fingers in there. Because it's kind of like, you do cigars if you want. 
Yeah, I, I, I imagine it'll work on your cigars. But anyway, while you're here, give, <laughs> give us all a like and subscribe, will you? And, uh, well, click the little bell icon, because then you get a warm fuzzy feeling in your pocket. That'll be me uploading another video. And I know you'll be excited about that. I think the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put a frame together with this. And just, yeah, a little picture frame or something like that, just to show you how useful and how clean the actual uh, mitres are. And, and maybe another video on how to set the thing up so you get perfect mitres every time. Because <sighs> that would be the plan. Anyway, thank you for watching my little video of me sharpening my, uh, well, my Excalibur mitre trimmer. I used my angle gauge as well, my Inclomen.